Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a quick tip going over how to lock field sound until a flow has executed uh, within a Power App. So this specifically deals with instant flows, which are the type of flows that can be triggered from Power Apps. There's also a bunch of other ways to trigger them, uh, but this is the one we specifically use when we want to uh, trigger a flow from within a Canvas app. So the goal of today's video is to show you that as that flow is running, as we trigger it, um, how we can lock some fields down until Power Apps has passed on the information that it needs to. This does not wait for the flow to completely run through all of its actions, but again, just in the context of Power Apps sending all the data that it may need or just simply triggering it if it's not passing any data. But with knowledge of how this works, um, you can definitely use this for a lot of different scenarios. So today we just have a kind of simple test case set up um, and I'll quickly walk through that and then we can get into the video more. So on our left hand side here, we just have two text fields that are collecting uh, their values to a collection called COL stuff. Uh, in the middle, we are showing the COL stuff collection um, back to the user. And over here, we have the send records to SharePoint button, which is triggering the add all records to SharePoint flow um, and wrapping the collection stuff uh, in the JSON function and passing that through. Down here, we have a exit button with the formula exit, uh, as well as a back button up here with back. So if we jump over to the flow really quickly, we can see that we are just parsing through um, the collection. And then for every record that's found in that collection, we're creating an item in a SharePoint list. Pretty basic stuff for this system, but again, this is meant to be used on more complex scenarios where maybe you're passing large collections of data to Power Automate or images, attachments, stuff like that. So I've gone ahead and pre-populated this collection with about a thousand records. Uh, so if we go and trigger our flow, we can see that the button will gray out briefly, but it has now passed those records onto Power Automate. Again, that doesn't mean that the flow is done running completely, just that our job on our end is complete. So the real problem that we're trying to solve here is if you have an app that may have an exit button or a back button or other buttons on the screen that as you're sending data to Power Automate, you wanna make sure that a user can't accidentally click that button and leave the app maybe before um, you've sent data. As developers on our end, everything seems to go really quick uh, most of the time with Power Apps, especially working with flows on a computer. But for some end users out there that may be using these apps on their phone with mobile data or internet connection that's slower, uh, you know, stuff that might take a developer two or three seconds to run uh, could take, you know, 15, 20 seconds for them. So what you don't want to do is have the option for them to leave the app or go to a different screen and start doing other stuff if that step hasn't concluded. So we're gonna show you how to fix that quickly. So how we tackle this is relatively simple. We're gonna be leveraging a variable and then the different display modes and visibilities of the buttons that we would like to hide or lock. So what we're first gonna do is click on the send records to SharePoint button and expand this a bit. And we will start at the top and we'll just enter a new line. Um, and what we wanna do is either use set or update context. In this case, we'll just use set and we'll say um, var triggered. And then we will do comma for the value and we will say true and we will close it off and then semicolon. So if we format the text, um, basically as the buttons press, the first thing this button is going to do is set the variable triggered to true. And then since Power Apps go sequentially, it is then going to move on and add all records to SharePoint.run. And once it has done that, it'll move on to the next step. So pretty simple. We'll just copy our variable and we'll go underneath and we'll say oh, semicolon here. Um, and we will say set var trigger to false. So now what we can do is copy our variable. Um, and what we can do to visualize this is set a text label down and we will set it to var triggered. We can see right now it is false um, and we can click this. It'll quickly turn to true and then it'll turn back to false. So you can see really quick, um, but now we can leverage this variable in our buttons. Like I said, the display mode and visibility, uh, we can start with the back button. Um, we can say that we only want this to be visible um, if the flow is not running. So what we'll do is set its visibility to var triggered. So then what we want to do is come to the front of the variable and say the opposite. So the opposite of its current value, um, which would be true because uh, its current value is going to be false. Um, so now we will have a button disappear when we um, trigger this flow. So we can see it's gone really quickly. Um, and we can do the same thing to this exit app button down here. If we just go to the display mode property and we'll expand this formula bar quickly. Um, and we'll give a couple, actually, we'll just clear this whole thing out and rewrite it ourselves. We'll say if uh, var triggered is equal to true, comma. So what for the true value next, um, we're gonna say display mode dot disabled and else. So if var triggered is not true, we're gonna say display mode, oh, hold up, can't type today, display mode dot edit, and we will close that off. So if the code on that button is running, we want this button to be disabled. Otherwise, we don't care. We can have it be editable. 
uh, meaning you can interact with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a bunch of records so maybe we can slow this thing down a bit um, and then we can take a peek at our results. So I've added about 400 records. Um, hopefully that'll slow this down a little bit, uh, but basically what we're hoping to happen is when we click this button, this button down here should gray out um, and the back button should completely disappear. So let's go ahead and try that. So we can see that when the code on this button is running, we cannot click the exit app button, nor could we click the back button. So that's pretty much it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and let me know what you thought about this video. Um, and if you have any questions around it, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you in the next video. Thank you.